let's introduce to you this idea of inverse functions. So let's imagine that I have two functions representing a price of a computer. Uh, one might be f of x uh, equals x plus 300. And let's say I have another one that's maybe g of x equals x minus 300. Now let's take the composite of those two functions f of g of x tells me I'll take f of g of x, so f of g of x, which is x minus 300. Run that through this function, my f of x, that becomes x minus 300 plus 300. And that just equals x. Notice that when I run it through, I kind of undid what I did. Undid what I done, done what I did. Yeah, one of those things. An inverse function takes a number, modifies it, and then the second part of that composite function reverses the effects. And we call such functions that do that an inverse function. So let's say, to provide a definition, that we have some f of g of x. Sorry, I got my parentheses all, all messed up right there. Let's try that again. F of g of x, there we go, where that equals x for all domain, for all values in the domain of g. We also know and we also assume that if one function undoes another, the another undoes the first function. So likewise, we can see that g of f of x, if that equals x as well, likewise that's an inverse. Now inverse, we also have a notation that we will become accustomed to and use. And we'll call inverse, a function that's inverse, with that notation. So we can see then that we could take f and the inverse of f, and if that equals our original value, there are inverses of each other. And likewise, if we took the inverse of the function, and, and returns it back to x, we also have an inverse. So what we have here is this idea where one time we can use a function and there's another function out there that undoes what we just did. And the notation that we'll use with that is this idea of f with a little um, subscript or superscript of a negative one. This means f inverse or the inverse of f.